Finally, for those of you wondering where I got this diagram from, I took it from this page on Honeysuckle Creek's website, in which they state that the Bochum Observatory in West Germany independently tracked Apollo 11 down to the lunar surface, as well as picked up the lunar rover transmissions from the last three missions. We contacted Bochum Observatory requesting a complete list of the time and dates for their acquisition and losses of Apollo's signal. We also asked whether or not they also tracked the Apollo during the voyage to and from the moon, or did they only track Apollo when it was on the lunar surface itself? Our email was answered by Thilo Elsnor, who told us, Both. So you understand what time it will take to pick up all times from the logbooks, not before the end of 2009, I would have the time to do this, because I now work on another project with NASA. Working on another project with NASA? Another project in addition to Apollo, perhaps? To explore this, we asked Elsnor, was Bochum Observatory working directly or indirectly with NASA in tracking the Apollo missions? Kind of like how the facilities in Australia were part of NASA's Deep Space Network. He told us, We were not part of the Deep Space Network, that was Madrid. We had good relationship with Werner von Braun. By Apollo 13, we worked directly with NASA together. By the other missions, we had permission to receive signals, and NASA was interested in the data from us, e.g. signal strength, orbit control, and so on. What we received, we sent back by telex. What NASA was interested in was the noise figure of a 20 meter antenna to receive images directly from the moon, what we had done together with Rode and Schwartz, producer of the receiving systems. So it seems, Bochum Observatory had strong connections with Dr. Werner von Braun, who essentially pioneered the Apollo program and NASA, and later, the Observatory and NASA were directly working together. So much for being independent verification. So, when it comes to tracking Apollo, it seems we are back to square one. None of the radio hams can attest to having tracked these vehicles all the way to the moon and back, and the only parties who can attest to having done so are one way or another connected with NASA. And on top of that, the FCC polices what these hams can and cannot disclose. And that's all she wrote. Something is very seriously wrong here. Apollo 8 goes behind the moon and the world loses all contact. Yet the Earth rotates Moscow out of the Moon's sight, and Mother Russia is somehow able to pick up signals that clearly can't reach them. No doubt, the late Ralph René was onto something when he asked, What kind of wondrous place is this Moon of ours?